Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is part one of our video series on how to modify your photographs using Lightroom. Um, in this series it's going to be very in-depth. Uh, we're going to cover Lightroom from beginning to end, but in this first part we're just going to jump right into the develop module because I believe that most people just want to start modifying their photographs. They don't really care about the map or the book or the slideshow or anything like that. Um, probably the next uh, most important uh, module after the develop module is the library module which is typically where you would think we'd start. Um, but I'm going to assume you know how to get your photographs onto your computer and into Lightroom. And um, we're going to, as I mentioned, we're going to just um, develop uh, some photograph, uh, a photograph today. Um, the future videos I'll go in depth in the library, map, book, slideshow, print, and web modules. Um, but we're going to spend a lot of time in the develop modules, uh, develop module I should say. Um, we're going to have a lot of videos uh, because that's uh, the meat and potatoes of Lightroom. And um, let's just get started right now. Um, these are the side panels and I'm not even going to talk too much about these right now. I just want to um, go right in and start developing a picture and um, so you guys see how the basic controls work and then we'll get into other things in super um, yeah, I'm sorry in later videos so I'm gonna close down these panels just to give us a little more room and um, what we have over here is this is our toolbar different tools um, that are available in Lightroom uh, cropping tool and spot removal tool, red eye tool, graduated filter, um, radial filter, and brush. Um, we're not going to do too much of those actually in this video. Um, what we are going to do, um, I'm going to show you my basic workflow um, that I use to modify a, a photograph um, and we'll go from there. What we are going to do is the first thing I do when I have a photograph is I like to straighten the horizon. And um, this is Lightroom 5. Um, it, this control is also in Lightroom 4. And what I use is the angle control. And you just click here and you can see how it gives you a kind of a level. And you draw, you could draw on any vertical, something that should be totally vertical in the picture or any horizontal, something that should be horizontal. So I'm going to pick the um, horizon line here and you could just draw a line like that across the horizon and let go and it straightened my picture. See it wasn't very crooked to begin with. Um, then to accept the changes you could hit enter. Um, the next thing I do is all these different um, modules here you could go in order, you could jump around, it doesn't matter. But I like to do lens corrections next because I like to see uh, what the photograph should look like the way my eye saw it. Um, so I'm going to correct any um, any distortion my lens call caused or anything uh, that um, you know was caused by the camera and lens. Um, Lightroom has profiles built in for your camera, your lens, um, just about every, I've never had one that wasn't in there. Um, you can see I shot with a Nikon, I used this specific model of lens and um, when you hit this uh, checkbox, enable profile collections, Lightroom will actual, actually uh, compensate the photograph for the problems that the lens might have, any distortion, barrel distortion, anything like that. Um, this is this panel is slightly different in Lightroom 4, um, but all these controls are there. The in, in, um, remove chromatic aberration is, uh, especially on verticals, um, you'll get some red or I should say purple and green kind of fringing around the edge. And this is caused by the lens, and it's more prominent in a real dark area of a picture. Um, this helps remove it um, when you hit the uh, remove chromatic aberration. In Lightroom 5 you also could um, just click this auto here and it will automatically level the picture and um, 
spring sometimes verticals tend to be falling away from you if you click that it tends to bring everything back and that's really all I do with the lens corrections um, right now next I jump up into the basic module and in here we could adjust for color balance and exposure um, a lot of different things in this photograph um, my uh, color balance is fine, tint's fine, I'm not really worried about any of that, so we're not going to mess with that. Now typically what I do, and actually most photographers do um, with a landscape photo, when they come into the basic module, is they bring the shadows all the way up. Now you can see it opened up all this dark area down here. One thing I should um, mention, though, um, let me return this to zero, by double clicking on a control you bring it back to where it, it began. Um, in this photograph uh, you can see there's some very r bright areas, some very dark areas. I exposed for the highlights it's called. Um, I exposed so it's slightly underexposed the, uh, so I have some a detail in the sky in the bright area. Um, it's easier in really all photo editing software to bring out the detail in the dark areas. If your light areas become too light, they get blown out and, and the information there is lost forever. So you'd like to, when you have a scene like this, it's the very bright, very dark, is to tend to expose it so it's uh, underexposed, so it's darker. You could get the details out of this part. Um, so what we're going to do now, as I mentioned, is we go back and we take the highlights all the way down, the shadows all the way up. Now it, you can see it flattened out the image but it opened up a lot. The, um, there's a little more detail in the sky and we have a lot more detail down here in the dark area. The next thing I do is the whites and the blacks. Um, by the way, uh, there's the histogram up here. All this, as you can see as I move um, the cursor across this, it affects, it shows up in the histogram what part of the histogram you're modifying. Um, I'm going to talk about more about the histogram in future videos, but right now, as I mentioned uh, numerous times, we're just going to you know, uh, modify a photograph to see how it's done and how quick you could do it. Now, this affects um, the whitest whites, as you can see. And the easy way to do this control is you hold the uh, Alt key or Option key on your keyboard, and when you do that, you can see with the whites, it'll turn completely black, your screen. You move the white to the right until you get some um, color forming up in here. And what that is, is that's the, showing you the parts now that are getting blown out. The, the purest white up there is totally blown out, no detail at all. The, um, as you go to the right, it gets more and more and more. So what you want to do is you want to adjust this control so you just start to see some spots. And then that's it. Now the blacks um, are opposite. You hold the Alt or Option key down. And when you do the blacks, it, the screen turns totally white. What you want to do is move it to the left until you get some black areas. Now tend to, I give a lot more um, leeway to the black so I give a lot of um, I, I move it until the white screen shows a lot more black areas when compared to the white which I showed just uh, tiny spots and now what that did it added a little more depth to the picture um, so we have th these adjusted um, the next thing I do is I like to uh, add a little contrast um, you could see you could bring it really contrasty or you can make it really really soft um, just a little I you know it's it's to taste and what I do today might be different than what I do tomorrow there's no real science to it um, if my exposure was down to you could turn up exposure that's what I would do next but typically on this photograph I think it's okay um, clarity um, most people think it's like sharpening technically it's not really sharpening although it kinda gives a little bit of an effect of sharpening um, I usually bring that up, uh, depending on the photograph, I bring it up uh, quite a bit. Um, and this one I think around 30 works good. 
Uh, vibrance is um, affects the color and it affects the the non-saturated colors in the photograph and it will make those a little more vibrant. Um, so what I'm saying is like if you had uh, this this orange up in here or a color that was very um, saturated it doesn't affect that color it affects the ones that aren't as saturated so we're gonna add a little vibrance as you see you could bring it way up and bring it way down make it black and white almost so we're gonna bring it up just a little bit saturation now just affects every single color in the photograph and makes it more saturated uh, we'll bring that up just a, t a touch now that is really all my adjustments in the basic panel. That's what I do here. Um, as I mentioned in a future video, we'll go in much greater detail on all these things. Uh, the next um, area in um, your adjustment panel is a uh, tone curve. And this is, you know, you could get more contrast, dark, light, um, things like that. Um, what we're going to do though, we're not going to really do anything in this photograph with the tone curve. Um, what we are going to do is in this panel here, this is the use saturation and luminance panel. It's got uh, little tabs here where you could um, adjust each color individually or you could just turn your photograph into a black and white and then um, when you adjust these it's as though you had um, certain filters on your on your camera when you took it to take on the old days with film you would put a filter on your camera to uh, when you use black and white film to bring out a certain um, shade so you could take a certain type of picture um, but we're not going to this picture is not going to be black and white so we go over here to the use saturation and luminance layer um, you could actually change the actual hue of red whatever the colors here um, typically I don't. I, I leave that alone. I go to saturation though and in this photograph I, as I recall there was a bright orange streak going across in here. So I want um, more saturation of the orange. So I bring this up. Um, there was yellows in there too. I bring that up. Now there was some blues up in here so I want the blues higher. So, you know, you just kind of slide them around. This is all non-destructive in Lightroom, so you could go back and change things. You're not going to hurt anything. Next, uh, luminance, I just need it to be, you know, more prominent. So I bring the orange down. See how it affects the orange sky? Bring it down to taste. Make a little more yellow. And the blue, bring the blue a little down a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Um, for this um, in the U saturation and luminance panel um, satisfied with that. Um, the next thing um, you do is you go I do is I go to the detail panel and you could sharpen your picture and um, offer some noise reduction. Um, typically I'll um, I'm going to actually have one video that's dedicated to this whole thing because this is how important it is. But a good uh, starting point or a good way to you know just get you in the ballpark if you don't you're not so worried about it get your sharpening around 70 don't even mess with these other sliders and bring your noise reduction around 40 that's a just a quick dirty um, way to get you in the ballpark um, for now we'll just leave it at that and like I mentioned we'll go in a lot more detail on that we already did lens corrections um, Effects I always do last. We'll go into that in a minute. Uh, camera calibration. Um, here, typically all I do is um, in this slider here. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Um, you see all these different things. We have camera landscape, neutral, Adobe standard. If you're shooting a JPEG, you won't have this. Um, you won't have any choices, I believe. It, you'll just be stuck in whatever the camera made your JPEG into. Um, that's why I encourage you to shoot in RAW. When you shoot in RAW, all these controls give you a lot more um, leeway and you'll have all these different choices in here where you could modify the photograph. So just shoot in RAW and um, you'll uh, get a lot more um, ability you'll, to um, modify and adjust your photograph. 
Now in this uh, under cali camera calibration um, in the profile we could use a camera landscape profile and you'll see the picture gets a little more intense. Uh, camera neutral will bring it back a little bit. Uh, camera portrait, if you're taking a portrait this is supposedly um, you know more uh, geared for a portrait. Camera standard you can see pretty much uh, where I had it to begin with. In camera vivid everything's going to be uh, a little more vivid. Now I don't like this as much. I think it made this a little too dark uh, down here. And I didn't like any... The landscape was probably my next one that I liked and that made everything also darker. So um, I'm just going to leave it where it was. Adobe Standard. Sometimes I switch it, sometimes I don't. It's really um, up to you. Um, next thing we do is I jump into effects and um, I like to add a vignette uh, to the photograph, um, very slight to help draw the, the person looking at the photograph into the center of the picture. So this uh, mount slider, if you slide it to the right you'll get white, if you slide it to the left you'll get black. And as I mentioned I just want to do a very slight vignette, pretty much like that. And that actually is it. Um, this is how quick you could go because my idea is that I don't want to spend a lot of time post-processing my photographs. Um, my main thing is I want to be out taking pictures. I don't want to be modifying them in Lightroom or uh, you know any other program for that matter. Um, so uh, to give you an idea, um, this is the before photograph here and here's the after photograph. You can see how we dramatically improved the photograph. There's actually more I would probably do on this, but I'm going to save it for the next video. And I'm um, going to show you some um, of these tools up here of what I do to further enhance the video. Uh, but as I mentioned numerous times, is in this video, I just want to show you the real quick workflow of how I go through it and what you could do uh, to bring this very flat, washed out video or I'm sorry, photograph into the make it into this. And that's it for now. Um, I'm Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. And stop over uh, to AnthonyMorganti.com. I'll be having every day I'll be adding another video um, about Lightroom and what you could do to um, improve your photographs. Thanks.